As we head into year end, we're doing everything we can to get our message out and especially opportunities to give. But there are outside forces impacting our donors' perspective on giving, and that relates to our current economic situation. The Chronicle for Philanthropy just did a study on the impacts of giving at this time, and I'm excited to share with you those findings. Stay tuned. But first, I'm Jim Dempsey, and I make videos to help nonprofit leaders be more effective in fundraising and development and just be a better leader. If you like what you hear, subscribe to this channel. As we get deeper into the year-end giving season, there are some concerns being raised about the stability of our economy, inflation, and other major issues that may affect your donor's perspective on giving. Sarah Hershander of the Chronicle of Philanthropy writes in the November 9 issue of their online newsletter, troubling economic signs, including high inflation, have clouded the outlook for nonprofits just at a moment when many organizations are entering their most important period of raising money. In her article, she brings up some very important key indicators that I thought you might find interesting at this time of year, and then I'll make some recommendations for how you should proceed. Key indicator number one, GDP has grown but consumer confidence is low. The government has reported that the gross domestic product for the third quarter grew but Hirschander reports that consumer confidence, which can signal how Americans will feel about the discretionary money they have available to give to a charity, remains low. Over the last year, I've started to see this effect play out in our donors' long-term commitments. I do weekend events for major donors and have seen great success with three-year commitments. However, since 2021, it seems that donors are opting for one-year commitments rather than the three-year option because of uncertainty in the future. A reduction of long-term commitments means that overall, we're going to be getting less income. Hershander seems to validate this when she writes, rising interest rates have stoked fears that the country could slide into a recession. Nonprofit leaders need to remain vigilant about the prospect of an economic slump. Shannon McCracken, CEO of the Nonprofit Alliance, is quoted as saying, the year's end is such a critical fundraising period for nearly everyone. Some of these unknowns over the past two months have really put a pause on spending and caused everyone to go back and re-budget for different scenarios. During our summer budget preparation period, our finance department warned us that we shouldn't expect big increases in our budget. And in fact, there may be cutbacks mid-year depending on how giving is being affected. All this due to the uncertainty of giving to our organization. My recommendation is that you be sensitive to the uncertain environment and lack of consumer confidence and provide opportunities that aren't long-term in nature but focus on the immediate outcomes. Positive results that come from gifts will lead to second and third gifts. Overall, you may be getting smaller gifts but more frequent gifts can help you make up the difference in revenue. Leading indicator number two, GDP grew while other economic indicators fell. As mentioned earlier, Hirschender's research found that gross domestic product increased 2.6%, but consumer spending fell and the housing market slowed significantly as a result of rising interest rates. Hirschender writes, the Federal Reserve has been notching up interest rates to quell inflation. But experts warn that the measures might plunge the country into a recession with particularly challenging effects for nonprofits. My recommendation is that you continue to promote the successes accomplished through your efforts, the integrity of your strategies, and above all, the lives changed by your organization. The rule of thumb is people give to people justified by the cause. By connecting donors to those who are impacted by gifts, this will continue to grow loyalty to your efforts and lead to more gifts. But even if it doesn't get you more gifts now, your continued communication and feedback will lead to larger gifts once the economy rebounds. Key indicator number three, recession fears are hitting nonprofits hard. 
In the same article, Eddie Torres, CEO of the Grant Makers in the Art, writes, after several years of unexpectedly strong support from foundations and governments, nonprofits are suffering a slump. A significant amount of funding that nonprofits received during the pandemic came from government support and foundation grants, which dried up, and grant makers have been cautious in light of economic fears. Torres adds, foundations tend to get very anxious in periods of impending recession after having been very generous during a historic time to be starting down a recession when we were already at the precipice is really unprecedented. My recommendation to you is diversify your portfolio. Just as you would never think of putting all your money into one stock, you should never rely on just one funding source like foundations. No income thrust should ever generate more than 33% of your income. That leads to a dependency on that effort and leaves you vulnerable during economic downturns or other threats. Finding ways to generate income from other sources is essential. This is a great time to start to grow your major or middle donor programs where you can invest in individual relationships. It also might be a good time to consider a large-scale event like a vision dinner where you can get a little from many. Key indicator number four, unemployment rates impact nonprofits, especially development staff. In the third quarter, unemployment rose slightly to 3.7%. The strong labor market in the for-profit sector means that nonprofits will struggle to fill open positions, especially in development, says McCracken. A survey released by the Chronicle for Philanthropy in November 2022 found that 89% of development officers said their organization doesn't have enough people to successfully raise money. And four in five say it takes longer than it did two years ago to fill vacant roles. Hershander writes, difficulties filling development positions in nonprofits could be a drag on crucial year-end giving results. The tight labor market has implications that go beyond the fourth quarter. Trouble filling mid-career development positions now could mean fewer candidates are available for upper-level jobs in the future, says McCracken. If this is truly speaking to our ability to fill these roles, where will we be in five to 10 years in terms of that pipeline to more senior roles? My recommendation is that since it's harder to find new employees, keeping the ones you do have is essential. Increasing pay and providing incentives and bonuses are a plus, and even increasing health care and other benefits is important. Less development officers means the ones we do have will need to raise more than ever just to break even from the prior years. Ways to boost morale is essential as added workload will lead to burnout and depression. Key indicator number five, consumer sentiment affects donor giving. According to Hershander, consumer confidence remained historically low in October. Consumers' feelings of gloom has been driven largely by inflation and looming economic uncertainty and may hold troubling signs for giving. The effects of inflation and rising costs are showing up in the behavior of everyday donors, says McCracken, who noted that inflation has also hit nonprofits themselves as they've been forced to contend with higher expenses. McCracken exhibits outstanding insight when she writes, while donors responded to the COVID pandemic, a time of high economic anxiety by increasing their gifts, many nonprofits have struggled to convey the urgency of today's fundraising need to donors who gave more over the past years and assume the organizations are now on a steadier ground. She goes on to say it's like they're the victims of their own success in 2020 when their programs performed well. My recommendation, if managed properly, your nonprofit should have been building up a reserve in the prosperous times that will carry you over into lean times. If that was not done, then this is the time to build relationships and go deeper with our partners so that when the economy turns around for the better, that donors know who was with them when things were down. Unfortunately, too many nonprofits abandon donors during difficult times. And trust me, donors remember who cared about them when they couldn't give. 
Key indicator number six. S&P 500 has an impact on giving. McCracken points out that while the stock market grew significantly in October, the market's volatility over the past several months has still caused some high earning donors to put a pause on larger gifts. She finishes by stating the stock market in particular is causing large earners to be more cautious and conservative, which is worrisome as organizations are counting down the end of the calendar year. My recommendation is that your nonprofit should broaden its base so that you are not too dependent on any one donor. If larger donors are freezing, lowering, or even stopping giving, it's important that you find one or two or more donors to replace their gift. And if this affects more than a few large donors, it means you need to make up that giving with multiple smaller gifts. More smaller donors will have to make up for a few larger gifts, at least for this season. We're indeed living in some challenging times and as nonprofits, we often are unfairly hit during downturns in the economy. Through no fault of our own, we can lose one or more donors and see a dramatic increase in giving. We must do all we can to weather the storms Deep, meaningful relationships almost always help when giving is limited. Those donors who cut back do so in fewer numbers and don't reduce giving as much if they have a strong relationship with a nonprofit. Work on growing relationships and look for ways to recession-proof your efforts as much as possible. Batten down the hatches and prepare for stormy seas ahead. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which concepts you like best or wanted to start first. If you've never subscribed to this channel, please know that there's no cost to you, but the more subscribers we have, the more this message gets out to others and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from our collective experiences. Become a life changer today. Simply hit the subscribe button below and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. Consider sharing this video with a friend or colleague. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a major donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.